All right, this is again a speech which was given by the Lubavitcher Rebbe in 1992. And it was following the speech that he gave last week, <clears throat> which that was directed to the Shluchim. Who are the Shluchim? The Shluchim are the representatives, the emissaries of the Lubavitcher Rebbe spread around the whole world. When the Rebbe gave it, it was, it was 1992, there was, I don't know, maybe a thousand. Now this year there's, I don't know, 10,000. Who knows how many there are? <clears throat> but the message is the same message. It's not, it has not changed one iota. And that is that all we should be interested in is Mashiach and bringing Mashiach and doing everything we can to contribute to his <clears throat> and hasten his arrival of Mashiach. And again, what is Mashiach? Mashiach is, is not going to be some sort of a you know shining knight on a, on a horse or something, a donkey. <clears throat> right, that what he says, and it says that he's going to be on a riding on a donkey. It doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to be riding on a donkey. Who rides on donkeys nowadays? And if you ride on a donkey, who's going to pay attention to you riding on a donkey? Who rides on? <clears throat> In Jerusalem, they have what's called the, there's people they have what's called the, the Messiah syndrome. People go to the, the, the Jerusalem and they feel all of a sudden the miracle of the fact that they're alive and that God is enlivening them. And they say, wow, I'm special. I must be Mashiach. And they go and they try to preach and they put on white garments or whatever. Nobody listens to them. I don't know. I've never heard of one that bought a white donkey. You know, <laughs> I mean, that costs money, you know. So that, you know, that, and the, those delusions go up to a certain point. You're not going to take out cold cash for your delusions. But he's Messiah until he has to take out, you know, puts cold cash down. <laughs> In any case, the fact of the matter is, is that Mashiach, who is Mashiach? Mashiach is going to be a person that's going to do something like what Moses did, but infinitely more so. Just like Moses took all the Jews out of Egypt and they never would have dreamed that they could get out. And they hadn't the mentality or the the uh, how do you say the experience in any way that it was even possible to go out of Egypt? They never dreamed. And Colin came along Moses and he took everybody out. That's it, they're out. And it says, even to the degree that a lot of the Jews, four fifths of them, they didn't want to leave, they didn't think you could leave. <clears throat> anyway, let's not talk about the past. The Mashiach is going to be a person just like King, the, the, the Moses that is going to make this big, massive change in the world, but unlike Moses, he's not necessarily going to destroy anyone, not necessarily. <clears throat> the job of Mashiach is not just to reveal godliness to the Jews, to reveal godliness to all of the entire world. <clears throat> and the Jews will, uh, in other words, to take, how did they say, to take not just the Jews out of Egypt, but to take the Egypt out of the Jews. To take the Egypt means limitations. And from that will come the whole world. So essentially what Mashiach is, is, is just to reveal the truth. That God is creating us, God is good, and God wants to give us infinitely more, each and every human being, but we just don't want to accept. So Mashiach will <clears throat> educate the world to want to accept the blessings of Mashiach. As it is, every human being is made in the image of God, and nobody knows what that means. Mashiach will come and reveal what that means. <clears throat> <clears throat> Whoa, here we go. <clears throat> okay, so first, now the Rebbe, of course, is speaking to the Jews. Mashiach is going to be a Jew, and he's going to talk to the Jews, and he's going to unify the Jews. Jews first. And when he activates the Jews, then the Jews will be able to activate and to educate the whole entire world to be normal. Huh? To be normal, to be loving, to be friendly, to be positive, to be productive. <clears throat> Here we go. This is a speech by the Lubavitcher Rebbe. Oh, oh. Parsha Toldo, this week's Torah portion. <clears throat> Out of the first day of Rosh Chodesh Kislev. <clears throat> and Shabbat Parshat Toldot, Beit Kislev. <clears throat> so the, it's the same thing as this year, as this year. The first day of the month of Kislev, that's the month of the Jewish months, that's the month that Hanukkah comes in. The first month 
the first day of Kislev is this, it's on Friday. So the Rebbe gave a speech on Thursday night. It was Thursday night the Rebbe gave a speech. And also on Shabbat, which was the second day of Kislev. <clears throat> so the Rebbe here is going to talk a lot about the new month. Now the Jewish calendar goes according to the months. It goes according to the months, but not solely according to the months. The Jewish calendar goes according to the months, <clears throat> but the months have to be in sync with the seasons because the month of Nisan always has to come in the spring. And if you go according only according to the moon, then it's like that's what the Arab calendar does. So sometimes you get the same month will be in the summer, and sometimes that month will be in the winter because they don't adjust according to the sun at all, seasons at all. The 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 how do you say the the regular calendar? The, I don't know if that's what, anyway the calendar in America and England, those places that goes only according to the sun, only according to the seasons. It has nothing to do with the moon whatsoever. The first day of the month. Sometimes the moon can be full. Sometimes it can be the, the it can be uh, what do you say a new moon, a full moon. <clears throat> no connection to the moon. The Jewish calendar is is the months start according to the moon. When there's the first sliver of the moon appears, then that's the first day of the next month. It used to be that they used to judge it according to sight. It used to be the grand court in in in, in Jerusalem, and they used to decide. But there stood up a person about 200 years after the temple was destroyed, and his name was Hillel, not the Hillel that was Hillel and Shammai. And he set the calendar for all time, that exactly when the calendar would start. <clears throat> so, but nevertheless, the Jews go according to the, the moon, and once every three years or so, they add on another month. They add on another month, and that puts everything back into sync, so that the, into sync, so that the synchronizes everything so that the moon and the sun synchronize. This becomes the first day of, of Nisan, the month of Nisan, will come in the spring. Okay. And now here the Rebbe is going to talk about the moon. But the main thing about the Jews is the moon. Just once every three years, four years, what they, they make a, an extra month. But the main thing is you judge according to the moon. It's known that every Rosh Chodesh, Rosh Chodesh means the, the, the first day of the month. This is <clears throat> also a spiritual concept. It represents a, pure, a spiritual concept, a meshutaf, the kol chadashim, which this idea of the first day of the month, this is something which is found in every month. First day. Like it's expressed in the reading of the Torah and the prayer, so we special prayers we make on the first day of the month, Roshei Chad Sheichem. And the first days of the month, Shahu, the call Ashana. This is in all the months of the year. <clears throat> this is a general thing, the first day of the month, the Indian Prati, and it's also an individual thing, which is relevant to this particular month. <clears throat> As is stressed in the name of the month. Every month has a different name. So every month has something in common, namely the first day of the month especially, it's a new month. And then each month has its individual <clears throat> quality. There has, there has its individual name. The Yeshla Bayer, let's explain what is the first day of the month of Kislev. And what is the whole general idea of the first day of the month in general? What is it? Have a question? I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so what is the month, the idea of this specific month of Kislev? And what is the idea, the general idea of the first day of the month? <clears throat> but oh, who Iker, and the main thing is, and this idea of the first day of the month, this is especially stressed in this month of Kislev, more than any of the other months. Why? We'll see. And mainly, and that's the main thing, the connection between all this and the main point and the main <clears throat> <clears throat> the main topic and everything of every single Jew and all of the Jewish people and all of the generations, and that is what all of the days of your life is only should be devoted to 
to bring to the days of the Mashiach. Your whole life should be devoted only to one thing, bringing to Mashiach. Bringing Mashiach. And there's doing something to contribute to the arrival of the Mashiach, and not just the person who's the Mashiach, but also all the changes that the Mashiach will bring, the days of the Mashiach. And especially in our generation now, like it's mentioned many times lately, that we said, like the Rebbe said last week, that now we're really talking about Mashiach in a big way, because Mashiach is going, everything has been prepared. All the preparations has been, have been made. The Jewish people have suffered enough. The Jewish people have prayed enough. They've done enough good deeds. Everything is already ready. All we have to do is accept the face of the Mashiach, the Paul Mamish, actually Mashiach. I, there's a lot of Jews that are not religious. All those Jews that are not religious are not religious for good reasons. They have very good reasons not to be religious, not to do what God wants. Either they had bad experiences or they weren't <clears throat> educated properly or nobody even told them that they're Jewish or whatever happened. But what, all those reasons and motivations that Jews have for not doing Torah and mitzvahs are all very good and very justified. And Mashiach will come and show that there's more reason to yes do the commandments. And there's more justification to yes believe in God and to yes be who you really are. You are a Jew. That's the idea of education. <clears throat> He's not going to say anybody you were wrong and you were evil, you were bad. God made us in such a way that we do not naturally love God or do the commandments. No one naturally doesn't eat milk and meat together. Nobody. No one naturally keeps Shabbat and doesn't light lights on Shabbat. How do you know when Shabbat is? No one is. So the, the, the people that do not keep the Shabbat, Jews, and the, that do not eat kosher food, they have very good justification for not doing so. So you can't punish these people, but what you can do is show them that they made a mistake. That either they were ignorant of better justifications or they were there, somebody misled them, somebody confused them. Okay. And that's the whole idea of, so we have to re accept the face of Mashiach, and Mashiach will take care of the rest. He'll take care of the rest. He'll educate the whole world. And Yana you know, the main thing of Rosh Chodesh, of the first day of the, and that also goes for the non Jews, right? All these non Jews that they worshiped, you know, some person and the, this, because they thought that there was nothing better. And you can't blame them because the Jews didn't tell them there was anything better. So you can't blame them. If you want to blame anybody, blame me. But I should have done some more. But <clears throat> I mean, you can't blame the other Jews that didn't do it because they've got good motivations. You can't blame the non-Jews because, no, the Jews didn't help them. There's only one person that you can blame, and that's me. <laughs> I knew what I should do, and I didn't do as much as I should. Okay, but that's also correctable. That's not the, that's, all. okay, here we go. In Yanua, Kalali, the genuine, the genuine thing of the first day of the month, <clears throat> The first day of the month in Judaism, it's not called the first day of the month. <clears throat> it's called Rosh Chodesh. It's called the head of the month. Something like in Judaism, it's the, the first day of the year is not called New Year's Day. It's not called the first day. It's called the head of the year. New, it's not called New Year. It's not called the first of the year. It's called the head of the year. This also, the beginning of every month, is called the head of the month. Oh, the word in Hebrew for month is the same word for renewal or novelty, being new the first time, Chodesh. Chodesh comes from the language of Chirush, something that's new. al shem Chirush the Mola the Levana, because the moon becomes new. After this moon goes and becomes less and less in the first half of the month, until it becomes completely full in the middle of the month, and then it gets less and less. So on the 15th day of the month, the moon is full, and it gets less and less, and until it, it goes away totally. That's the day before the new month. And then afterwards, after that, is Nasi, the whole lot of Shalom, but often Shal Ischachos. Then there becomes a renewal in a way that it becomes <clears throat> renewed. Like it says, it says, 
if God thought this is a statement that John, Jonathan, what was it, Jonathan? Jonathan. John, Jonathan, John, the son of King Saul, right? King Saul hated King David. I'm explaining the sentence. King Saul hated King David, and um, it wasn't so sure what the degree of his hatred was. So King Saul had a son called Jonathan, and Jonathan was a best bosom friend of King David, right? King David had the tremendous deep love for one another, tremendous deep appreciation for one another. So Jonathan said, listen, let's do this. <clears throat> uh, you don't come. King Solomon is going to make a big, King Saul is going to make a big meal on the first day of the month. You don't come and let's see how he reacts. So he says, karata, that you will be noticed because your place of sitting is empty. By means of being empty, that David wasn't there. But Dugmat Helam, this is something like the concealment of the moon. Nasa, there is made, Zikron Venif Karata, you will be remembered. But Dugmat, something like the birth of the moon. Huh? So by means that the moon becomes hidden, by means of that, it becomes revealed afterwards, the next day. If it wouldn't become hidden, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a big deal. It was just always like the sun, always there. <laughs> Even though <clears throat> that when the moon is born, the first day of the month is just a little sliver, or just a nakuda, just a little point. Hari Leos and Nakuda lay down because it's but because it's a point of birth. Is Nichlalbo call him shach. There's afterwards everything. But dugma is just like a person in the life in his life. The first second that he's born comes out to the world, so it's a very happy thing. Mazel tov, he got born a baby. What do you mean get born to a baby? Right? There's nothing there. What type of birth? Is he smart? How is he? Is he you don't know nothing about him. My father always used to joke. <laughs> my, my father, blessed memory. They'd show him a baby. What do you think about the baby? He'd say, all the babies look the same. <laughs> they all look the same. Isn't he a cute baby? He would say, all the babies look the same. Right? I remember it was... Uh, <laughs> he said about everybody. And I said, all about the babies. He used to have all the time about a pharmacy. In, uh, in in black areas, you know, where, where the Negroes, and they used to bring, they, they were very friendly, it was very friendly with everybody, so they used to show them sometimes, look at my new baby, what do you think, isn't he a nice baby? And my father would say, all the babies look the same, I don't know, what's the difference between one baby and another baby? But all the babies look the same, the same thing, but is he going to be smart, is he going to be strong, is he going to be healthy, is he going to be wise, is he going to be good, how do you know, it's just a baby, it's a nothing, but nevertheless, at that moment, when he's born, the first sliver, oh, it's a it's a person. It's a it's a happy thing. Okay, and therefore, Nikra B'Shem Rosh. I remember how the ladies used to laugh. You would say, all the babies look the same. They say, oh, 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 oh you're right. Look... But the fact of the matter is, it's the truth, right? It's the truth. The first little sliver, you don't know nothing about it. The same thing, the first sliver of the month, you don't know anything. But it's a it's a month. It's a new month. It's a person. It's a new person. What do you care how he looks? If he's got a big nose, if he has a, or well, you know, what color his eyes are, he's got. What do you care if he's stupid? If he's smart, what do you care? It's a person, a human person. So he's stupid over here. I'll be smart over here. I'll be right. He'll be a big genius, but he'll be a, not a nice guy. I'll be a nice guy, but he'll be stupid. If everybody has some. Everybody has something good about them, right? Okay, therefore, <clears throat> it's hidden, but it's it, the, just the fact that he's born. This is like the head. That's why it's called Rosh Chodesh. Just like the head of a person, this includes the whole person. Kamut Gash, like it's stressed in Rosh Hashanah, the first day of the year. It's called the head of the year. But this is not just the first day of the year. It is the head and includes the whole entire year, just like the head of a person and includes this, includes this whole body. Rosh Chodesh Tishrei. The letters, the first day of the, of the month, there's the first day, first 